And greetings and welcome to the QCast. This is season four, episode 41. It's been a busy last week, week and a half on the show because it is a busy, busy, busy time of year. And as I keep saying, the greatest time of year. Um, I wanted to stay in the NESCAC. So uh, we talked to Kevin App of Williams about, about his semifinal matchup coming up against Amherst. And uh, boy, here's a here's a program, here's a team that is having a monster season uh the trinity uh, trinity college bantams in hartford connecticut led by james cosgrove the head coach uh james thank you so much for joining me on the qcast it has been a crazy great season for the bantams how the heck are you doing yeah doing great you know we have a great bunch of kids and uh, we've had a you know very successful season to this point and uh more importantly, though, Bob, is, uh, you know, we have great kids who really worked hard and really persevered to to have a season like this. That's the kind of the most enjoyable part of it. You're you're sitting here, James, at 24-1. and one. Uh, You finished 9-1 and one in the NESCAC. We'll get into that a little bit deeper. Um, heading into the season, you know, one thing I wish I would have looked up and I forgot to is, like, I, I can't remember if there was a NESCAC preseason poll. I don't know if that's a thing in the NESCAC, but preseason expectations versus where you're sitting now. Um, what did you think you had coming into the year? And, and and then kind of compare that to where you're sitting here now at 24 and one. Yeah. To, to be honest with you, Bob, there, there are no NESCAC preseason polls. I didn't think so. We probably would have been somewhere in the middle. Um, right. But uh, you know, you know, we had, we, we, we had a last two years, we've had good years. We were 17 and nine and we were 16 and nine last year, 17 and nine the year before. Um, you know, lost lost to Williams in the quarterfinals last year. Lost to uh, w- went to the semifinals the year before. So we've had some pretty good years with uh, with a lot of these same guys. And you know, we have a lot of guys back from the previous two years that have had a lot of experience now and and kind of been working hard and kind of really gearing up for a year like this. So I, I'm you know, I mean, no one ever expects to go 24 and one, right. but I'm not surprised we're we're having a a, a, a very good year because. I think our guys have really worked hard the last two or three years to to uh, to, to come back and be ready for, for a year that we're going to be able to challenge for the NESCAC and, and you know, be an NCAA tournament team and uh, hopefully do well there. When, when I watch you guys play, which I've had a chance to watch you several times this year, uh, the thing that jumps out is your defense. And a shout out to my guy, Akiva Poppers, who's the first one that told me to watch uh, Trinity of Connecticut because of the defense. And, you know, Coach, everywhere – Everywhere you've been, uh, defense is a staple of kind of your coaching system. And when I look at your numbers this year, I mean, opponents are shooting 37% from the field and scoring 56. Um, Your opponents have 252 assists to 373 turnovers, 121 more turnovers than assists. Can you talk a little bit just philosophically about you know, being a defensive oriented system and and how the heck you get your guys to play such amazing defense consistently. Yeah. And, you know, those, those are great questions. And I, and I think it's really, like I said, I think it's more of a tribute to our, to our players and our, our young men where, you know, we've had always had this philosophy. We've had other years here at Trinity. I've had years at other places where we've been tops in the nation defensively. Um, but this this group has been another group that has really, really bought in and really done a great job on the defensive end. You know, uh, our our um, player of the year um, uh, superlatives and all that, all conference is coming out uh, in, in the next week or so. And, you know, I put up Dana Smith uh, for our defensive player of the year. And he's been with us. He's a fifth year senior. So uh, he's been with us a while. And he's you know, we tell them, you know, go go guard the best center on that team, go guard the point guard on that other team. You know, whatever whatever you whatever we need, he does it. So he's kind of been a catalyst for our defense. And then Jarrell Jarrell Garugo is another terrific defender. And you know, all of our guys have really really bought in. You know, we've been playing 10, 10 11 deep, and uh, you know, I think all of our guys are are pretty strong defensively, which 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 helps when you play that many guys. Yeah, it it really is. It's uh, it's just a good defensive like team defense uh, squad that you have you know you, you you look at the way that your guys help and I think it's just really impressive uh watching you play uh, it's it's, a, it's impressive watching you play on the offensive end too <laughs> but boy the defensive end seems to be really where you hang your hat um you guys beat Wesleyan in the NESCAC quarters 
74 to 67. These games are all tough, James, right? I mean, when you get into the when you get into any NESCAT game period, it's a tough game. You get into these uh, uh, conference tournament games. Everyone knows each other. Um, seasons are on the line. You're playing against a Wesleyan team that needs to win that game. Talk about how intense that one was and talk about the win you came out of there with. Well, you know, I don't know how much people understand this, but any Wesleyan Trinity game is going to be a rock fight. I mean, uh, you know, we're 20 minutes from each other, you know, the, the closest, probably the, the closest two schools in, in the NESCAC. Um, you know, we've had rivalries for, for years and years and years. I mean, I have a ton of respect for, for Wesleyan basketball. Uh, they have a, a great, great coaches there. They do a great job. So we knew it was going to be a rock fight and it wasn't going to be easy. And uh, they have, you know, they have some very, very good players. Nick Johnson's a tremendous player, player of the year type uh, uh, candidate player. So uh, we knew it was going to be tough and we knew it wasn't going to be easy. And, uh, you know, when they, when, the, when the draws came on, you're the number two seed and you see, oh, you get to play Wesley. Like, oh, geez, that's, 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 not, that's not who you, uh, who you'd want to play uh, first off in your mind. I mean, we already played them down there and, and, and beat them in overtime. So uh, we knew it was going to be a tough game. We, you know, we came out on fire. They came right back. We, we got up by about 15 or 16 in the second half, and they cut it to two. So, you know, it, it, we really had to we really had to to gut it out and, and, and get a victory over them because they're a very well-coached and, and very good team. So I'm, I'm excited that we were able to hang on, play tough down the stretch, make the plays on the defensive end, and make the plays on the offensive end to, to get a W there because they're a very good team. Yeah, they are a good team, and it was a, it was a big win. Now it sets you up for the semifinals. So you head to Williamstown, right? So the the the, the tournament is being hosted at the number one seed. You you and Williams tied in the in the season at nine and one. Um, they got you head to head. We need to talk about that one. But they're the one seed, so everyone's now going to their place. I think the early game is Williams and Amherst. That's going to be you called it a rock fight. I'm going to call it a rock fight, right? That's going to be a good one. And yeah. then, uh, Coach, you've got Tufts, and I've watched them a bunch this year. They have some great wins. Um, they they won at Keene State, which is a really, really hard place to go in and win. Like, that's an intense place, and Keene State's a great team with a couple All-American-type guys. Um, they have several other great wins, too. But th this is a tough semifinal matchup with Tufts. Talk a little bit about what you've got coming up there Saturday. Yeah, it's it's going to be a tough matchup. They're a very good team, another well coached team, and uh, you know we we went into their place um, last week or you know previous weekend and beat them at their place. So I know they're going to be out for blood and and, and be uh, you know be out for revenge for us. So it's going to be a, t a tough battle. They have very good guards. They 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 have a very good big. So you know, and it's not going to be an easy situation at all. And uh, you know, but you know, people, I, I don't know. You know, uh, across the country, people understand, but I think in the Northeast, people really understand how tough the NESCAC really is. And I don't oh, care yeah. if the two seed, four seed, seven seed, or eight seed, it's going to be a battle, uh, you know, because everybody in, in our conference is very good. And it's, uh, you know, you get to the semifinals, you know, it doesn't matter who you're playing. It's going to be a tough game for sure. Yeah. And I can't speak to everyone across the country, but, you know, I'm a, uh, I'm a CCIW Illinois Wesleyan kind of guy that, uh, that believes that the NESCAC, is right at the top with the UAA, the CCIW, the YAC. Um, you know, I, I think the ARC there and I was in the mix. Um, yeah. But the, there, there's a group of conference, the ODAC, the ODAC. Yeah. There's a group of leagues of which it's hard to say which is the best historically, right? The NESCAC has been unbelievable. Um, always is. The top teams are always Final Four contenders and the middle and bottom teams are always dangerous. Um, I mentioned the Williams game. That was a, a game I was watching. Um, I can't remember how far back that goes. Maybe that was three weeks ago or so. Whenever it was, it was a game, as I recall it, it was a game that you guys controlled. I remember thinking, oh, Trinity's going to win this game. That's a huge road win. And they're going to be the number one seed in the league. And then Williams made an incredible comeback just to get in it. And then to allow themselves, didn't they hit, kid hit a three-pointer from the top of the key, I want to say. It was the left side of my streaming screen. It was over to the left. But right. talk about that that game. It was a great game. It was a great NESCAT game. Talk about the uh, that tough loss to Williams. Yeah, I really appreciate you bringing up some real good memories. Uh, about <laughs> no problem. Hey, thanks. That's what I do oh, on the QCast. We break it down, man. 
it, it was a great game, and and I agree with you. I thought we had it, you know, in control, and uh, we just, uh, you know, didn't make a couple plays down the stretch on both ends that we normally do. And uh, you know, they hit a they hit a tough they hit a tough shot at the buzzer to 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 beat us, and uh, with two seconds left, so. Yeah, I mean, it, it, was, it was a tough game and very, very good, very good squad that, that Kevin's got over there at, at Williams and he doesn't know the guy does a tremendous job. So, you know, we just, you know, it's funny because we hadn't been in many games, you know, like that at all, all year. And to be honest with you, um, you know, you, you, you know, it, it still stings and you hate losing a game that way. And we had, we felt we had it won and, but I think we had some very, very valuable lessons that we learned yeah. from that. I think it's helped us since then in a couple of games that we've had and we, we, we changed a couple of things defensively. We, we've done a couple of different things. So, you know, I mean, I, I think the big thing is you always say, if, you know, if you, you know, you, you know, you lose a game. Okay. But did you, did you learn from it? Is it going to make you better? So ho hopefully that's, you know, we, we've learned from it. It's going to make us better and help us, you know, you know, in the conference tournament and, and, and beyond. So, uh, but uh, yeah, it was, it was a tough game. And, uh, you know, I was real proud of our kids because as, as you know, in the next calc, we play Friday nights and then Saturday, and we had to drive from Williamstown up to, up to Middlebury and play a tough Middlebury squad. And we came back the next day and, right. and, and did a good job. So I was, I was proud of our guys for the resilience. They could have really hung their heads and, and, and been down in the dumps, but uh, you know, they, they, they bounced back the next day and, and had a good victory. So, you know, in, in the NESCAC, you go on the road and, you know, yeah. you know, getting like that, you win one out of two. It's not the worst thing in the world either. So, um, you know, you got to take it for what it is. And it was a great game. And, uh, they, you know, they hit some big shots down the stretch to beat us. And we did a couple of things we, uh, you know, that we'll learn from and get better with. Yeah, I thought that was the most impressive part of your season to date is I remember thinking after the Williams game and looking at your schedule, like, uh oh, this this might get really dicey here. This is a tough stretch. But the way you responded after losing that tough one at Williams, I thought really said that was that was the point where as, as a top 25 voter that I really, really became a big fan of the Bantams. It was the way you played right after that. And um, that's kind of when I finally understood how great you guys were. By the way, coach, I got to talk about D3 offices. I like doing the QCAST because I get to see these offices behind you there. You know, if I was talking to John Shire or Matt Painter, you know, look, they don't have, you know, the old school clock. They don't have the boxes over there, whatever that kind of a box is over your right shoulder. You have a D3 setup behind you. I mean, isn't that, isn't D3 a beautiful thing, James? I got to ask you about the office. No doubt. You know, and, and it's, uh, you know, the best thing about my office is I, I, my door's closed right now, but I can look out my door and, and now my, my assistant's right next to me. And I can look right right into the gym, so it's uh, everything's oh. right. Here. Everything's compact, and we're right there. So it's a uh, yeah. I, I, I love the situation where I can kind of see what's going on around me. I can see uh, who's in the gym, which guys are getting shots in today, and whatnot. So it's a it's a great situation, great setup, and uh, yeah, it's a it's probably you're right. It's probably a typical D three office, it's absolutely. Not but it's got everything we need, and we're uh, we're doing well with it for sure. Yeah, most backgrounds when I get on this thing have cinder block walls. There's some boxes, there's some papers, there's yeah. some plaques or basketballs or like stuff like you got on the wall behind you, which yeah. is beautiful. And that's a good lead in just to kind of like how great division three is James. Like you played, I want to say you played at the, uh, the, the D two level, right? St. Anselm, right. Yeah. You played at St. Yeah. Anselm. You're a really good player there. So you played at D two, you were a coach at the D two level um, yeah. among your stops heading up to Trinity, but you're you're a you're a D three guy now, and you were at Endicott before too as a coach, right? So you're you're a D three guy now. You've been what fourteen seasons at Trinity. What do you love so much about this great little D three world that we're all in, Coach? Well, you know, I kind of to be honest with you, I'm, I'm kind of lumping in um, D two and D three because sure. you know, small small college ball. Small college. You know, you know, I, you know, I was a small college player, and you know, and and, and was fortunate to play on some, some really good teams and have some really good experiences. And then, uh, you know, I was, I was a division one assistant for four years at the university of Hartford. And right. other than that, it's been all division two or division three. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know what it is. It's just, I think you really get guys that are just, you know, I, I just say like me, like really love it, really want to be here. You're, you're, you're here for the right reasons. You're, you're, you're in the gym for the right reasons. You're doing everything for the right reasons. And that's, you know, that's, you know, that's, that's what I'm about. You know, I have, I have three three kids. My two older ones both played in college. My younger one, she's a a junior in high school with 
with big aspirations to play in college. And, uh, you know, you know, we're, so we're kind of junkies, our family, we, you know, we're basketball junkies and, uh, you know, to, you know, at the D2, D3 level, that's what you get for players. You know, they're not here Absolutely. because they're, they're making some deal or they're going to play in the NBA. They're, they're here because they love to play ball. They love to compete and they, and they want to be in, in programs that they can do some great things. And so that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure you're, you know, I know your background a little bit. You're, you're, you're similar to, to me in that, in that way. And I think it's just, just kind of a neat way to, to, to approach the game. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I just love going to practice every day because our guys are into it. They want to be there. They want to get better. They want to learn. And, uh, you know, they're, they're there for the right reasons for sure. I'm the same way coach. Like people ask me a lot of times is, you know, why do you do all this stuff you do uh, being a fan of IWU and division three. And for me, it's cause it's just like, first of all, uh, um, as Jason Zimmerman of Emory said on the QCast, good basketball is good basketball, right? Good basketball is good basketball. And that's number one. And number two, I think the student athletes here in division three hoops, same as division two, um, they do it the right way, right? They're, they're kids that, that have a little better balance in their lives and perspective potentially, you know, they're, they're serious students, but they don't play any um, less hard than their division one counterparts. You know, that, What's happening in these conference tournament, James, I think you'd agree the results Saturday at Williams are going to mean as much to these four teams as they do to any conference tournament grouping in division one. Is that, I mean, would you agree with that? I certainly think that's the case. Well, I need to say another thing about D3 too, is like I say all the time, the kids are like, yeah, I mean, you know, he really is not interested. He doesn't want to go D3. You know, he thinks he's better. He thinks he's this or that. I want to be like, he thinks he's better than this. It's like, right. Have, have some of these kids come to a, a Trinity Wesleyan game, sit in the front row, watch how good these kids are, and say, "Yeah, you're too good to play there." I mean, it, it, it's almost it's almost comical because, like we say in our conference all the time, we need Division One players for us to be good. If we don't get Division One players, the right. guys that, that are Division One capable players, we're not going to be very good. And you know, maybe they come to Trinity or Wesleyan or Amherst because of the education or or, or, or whatever. But we got to get those guys that, you know, they, they could play low D1 and be just as success, just as, as successful, but they decided to come to the NESCAC or they came D3, you know, because different reasons, academics or whatever. So, you know, people don't understand how good D3 is and how good our conference is. And uh, I, I say it all the time. I'll tell a high school coach and say, yeah, I'll, I'll call him up about a kid and be like, yeah, he just, he thinks he's a D1 player. He's, you know, D1 and go, Okay, good. You know, we need the ones player, but have him come to one of our games, sit right. in the front row and say he's way better than our guys because, you know, we have we have D1 guys up and down our roster, so does everyone in, in our league because, you know, they wouldn't be able to compete in our league if they didn't, and that's that's just the facts. It's a great point. I I regularly try to make those points uh on Twitter or wherever else that you know that the best teams in Division 3 uh are loaded with guys that are that are upper level players. You know, whether that's division one guys or division two caliber guys, that's who's if you look at the top 25 or the top 30 or whatever, you will find that those teams have a bunch of people that could play a lot higher. So really well said. And I appreciate you saying that. Um, just a few more things uh, I wanted to make sure to ask about your team. Your team's really, really talented. Um, first of all, I wanted to ask about your senior Ben Callahan gold. Uh, he averages 17 points and six re rebounds a game, having a monster season. Talk a little bit about Ben, if you would. Yeah, Ben's had a great year. And, um, you know, <clears throat> sometimes I just say to myself, I'm watching him out there and, uh, you know, he, he's shooting a ball and maybe it's not the best shot in the world all the time, but I'm saying, I, you know, I, I gotta be a good coach and being a good coach is just let him go, you know, let, let him go. And, uh, you know, he, you know, he's been, he's been doing a great job, especially the last few weeks of just, you know, uh, you know, making big shots, making big plays, you know, he's, he's been passing the ball very well. He's been very good on defense also, but he's, he's a big time, big time shot maker. And, uh, you know, he's made some huge shots for us. Uh, you know, not, not only, you know, when we're up 20, but, you know, when, you know, scores tied or up three or six or something like that, we need a shot. I mean, he's been, very clutch and he's been clutch his whole career with us. And, uh, you know, the last month or so he's been a, a extremely cl clutch and guy we can really count on to, uh, to make plays for us on, on really both ends of the floor. And that that's a interesting point. It's, I think it's really well said that, uh, I, I can imagine as a, as a coach, like there are players like that, that kind of just sometimes need to take a shot. Even if maybe you look at it and you say, that's not the greatest shot in the world, but the fact that they took that one means that they're going to maybe take and make the next one. 
And so is that like, what is that like as a coach to have to kind of be patient and let a, and let a score sometimes shoot, shoot interesting shots, we'll say. Yeah. And, and, and to be honest with you about, we, we, we have two guys like that, you know, Ben's definitely that. And, and, and Henry Vetter's, you know, kind, yeah. of, kind of similar in that situation also. And it's like, sometimes it's like, you know, get the hell out of their way and let them play because, right. you know, you know, you know, you see it a lot. I mean, sometimes guys just kind of overcoach and trying to like put guys in the It's like, Hey, if, you, if you're, if you're, if you're open, shoot the ball. And it's like, you know, that's, you know, and, and, if, and if Henry Vetter's open or Ben Callahan gold's open and they have a shot and they don't shoot it, I'm going to yell at them for not shooting it. Right. And, and, you know, so like I said, I mean, you know, you know, sometimes doing a good job coaching is just to stay out of their way and let them, right. let them do what they can do. And, and, and to be honest with you, you don't always have guys who can do that, but you know, we have a couple guys, you know, that, that can do those things. And, you know, we, we gotta, you know, we gotta make sure that we understand that and, and, and help them help our team. And, you know, and, 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 and though that that's their role. And, you know, we, we talked, you know, we have a kid, Jarrell Okarugo, who his role is to, to play off of that and, 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 and get dump offs and to get, you know, putbacks and whatnot. And, you know, our other guys, you know, Will Doran, our point guard, to, to, to set everyone up. And Dana Smith's one of our leading assist guys and our top defender. And so, you know, everyone has a role. And, you know, sometimes you get nervous, like, this guy's taking all the shots. That guy, well, right. you know, and good teams, well, that's his role. Doesn't doesn't mean he's a he's the, the best player or better, but that's their role. That's what they need him, him this guy to do to be good. So, I mean, I, I think the best thing about our group is everyone understands their roles and everyone wants sure. to do the role and everyone wants to help our team be good. And that's all that matters. Yeah. You mentioned, you know, we talked about Ben, Ben Callahan gold 17 and six. You just mentioned Henry Vetter. Who's boy. He's like, he's having a monster season, 14 points, five rebounds, four assists a game. And uh, coach, check this out. I don't know if you're aware of this, this kid shooting nine thirty eight from the free throw line. Is it, how does it feel to have a guy like that where, you know, you're up, you're up three with a minute left and the other, the you know, other team's going to foul or whatever. Like you got someone like that, that you feel that confident in at the free throw line. Henry Vetter's having a great season. Yeah. He's, he, you know, he's another guy very similar, like we said about Ben, but he, you know, he, he's definitely, if, uh, if we're up a few late, you know, we got to get him the ball. If they're going to foul. We got to get him the ball. Ben's very close to that too. But uh, Henry's, you know, Henry's just about automatic on that. So uh, yeah, it's 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 nice to have a couple guys like that. And uh, and and I, honestly, the great thing too is I think our guys know, like, hey, yeah, we got to get those guys the ball, and we're gonna get if they get fouled, they're they're gonna right. cash that for sure. Yeah. You also mentioned so Henry Vetter's a sophomore, another sophomore. You mentioned is Jarrell Okarugo, eleven points, five rebounds a game. He's shooting five thirty five from the field, and. Uh, He's he's really come on for you this year, coach, and he's been a huge part of of why you guys are twenty four and one. Yeah, yeah, Drell's been uh, been terrific for us, and uh, he, you know he's been another catalyst on the defensive end. Like I said, with with Dana Smith, so he's been a very very good defender. He kind of started off the year, you know, being a guy that we were more we were counting more on on the defensive end, and he's kind of developed his offense. He's He's got a great pull up. He can really get to the rim. He, he's a great he's a great finisher and he's a great offensive rebounder. So he has a lot of different tools that he brings that that obviously complements some of our other guys also. Yeah, he a great player. Um, last question, then I'll check in with you see if there's anything we missed or anything you want to add. But uh, just curious as to how much you pay attention to regional rankings and you know, all of that stuff, right? All that positioning stuff right now in region one, currently the ranking that came out last Tuesday, uh, you guys are at the top of the region followed by Williams, Connecticut college. Um, or I may have that wrong. Did I write down? I think I wrote down that wrong. Um, don't quote me on that. Don't quote me on what I just said. You're at the top of the region though. I know that. So, right. um, you're in position right now. Like if we had to draw a bracket up currently, yeah, you're you're in great position to be a host. You know, you're a first weekend host, heck, potentially a second weekend host. So, how much do you look at that stuff? Do you, some coaches do, some coaches don't. Yeah, I don't really look at that all that much. Uh, my assistants they they look at it and they they keep me informed. Uh, you know about some of that, but uh, the regional rankings I think are important just to you know just you know where you're at and whatnot. But uh, other than that, I mean, it, it is what it is. I mean. 
you know, we're very, very good at home. If, if we, you know, I think right now all that's in my mind is if, if we can host, that's going to be a huge advantage for us. And uh, we had a, we had a tremendous crowd uh, Saturday for the, for the Wesleyan game. And I think it'll even be even better um, if we if we're fortunate to, to host in the, in the first round. So, you know, we'll see. And I'm um, just really just kind of taking it day by day. And right now we've been great. Um, our guys have been, have a great attitude because it's, it's, you know, what are we doing today? You know, what's practice going to be like today? And right. right now our focus is practice this week and getting ready for, for toughs and nothing else. So that's really where we're at. And I, I really commend our guys. I really bought into that. And, and I think we've done a good job of that. So we need to continue to have that mindset for sure. Yeah. There's, there's a lot of good teams in the Northeast and, you know, the, the North or the East side of the country to where anything can, can happen here in the final uh, week in terms of resumes and who's in shape to host but uh, yeah, I mean, kudos to you guys. You you you're sitting there with one of the one of the lock resumes. You know, it's a great it's a great place to be. And I'm sure it's not something you're going to talk to your team about. But like you guys, you guys could lose Saturday, and you could safely be in the NCAA tournament in great shape. Um, a lot of teams out there, like you know, I'm, my, my team probably needs to win our CCIW semi Friday. We're sweating things out here, but you guys have put yourself in a great position, and you, you've had an amazing year. Um, let me just give you any final words here, James, on the QCast. You know, you'll have some of the Bantams fan maybe tuning into this thing, and you'll get a lot of Division Three fans that are going to be listening to you here. Uh, what what final thoughts do you have on the QCast here today? No, not not much. I just appreciate being on here, and I'm really excited about uh, you know this this coming weekend. And uh, I, I think our team has uh, been been working hard, and uh, you know. When you're in the final four of a conference like that, it's just you know it's it's kind of it, it's kind of a neat feeling, and uh, you know just now it's just we can just go play and uh, have fun and work hard and, and continue to grow as a team, and hopefully we can do some stuff uh, moving forward. Yeah, c again, congratulations. Um, you, you know, it, it took me a while to understand this year. I think I was I wasn't voting for you guys for a while when most other people were, and I was kind of late to the game, but. I started watching you play and I would encourage anyone to check out your game Saturday against Tufts because that's going to be two high level D three teams that can really, really play. And right. uh, so kudos to you, James folks. That was a uh, QCast season four, episode 41. James Cosgrove is the head men's basketball coach of Trinity college in Hartford, Connecticut. They are 24 and one. They were uh, one of the teams mentioned in the top 16 reveal. And uh, uh, spoiler alert, they're going to be playing in the NCAA tournament, and we look forward to seeing them. James, thank you so much, and I hope to see you in a gym before this season's over. Sounds good. Thanks, Bob, for having me. Appreciate it.